In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Back in the 1990s, I worked for Arthur Anderson, formerly one of the big eight accounting firms, for those of you too young to remember. As a manager, I had my own office with plenty of bookshelves and cabinets to hold all the documents from my various projects. However, changes in workspace started to take place the last year or two I worked for the firm. And by the time I left, managers no longer had offices. If we were in town, not away, at a client, we needed to reserve a cubicle for the day. And we were allowed to keep on site only the number of files that would fit in a two-drawer filing cabinet. All other documents were shipped to a storage facility. On the days we were in the office, we would get our two-drawer filing cabinet, which was on wheels, from a closet, and we'd roll it over to the cubicle where we were working. And I remember being both a bit bothered and a bit intrigued by it all. I look back now and I see these changes as the early stage of a cultural shift. What started out as an efficiency goal ended up accommodating a desire, desire, a desire for flexibility in balancing career and family. These changes in workspace turned out to be a precursor to more flexible work schedules, including days working from home. We have seen a cultural shift in work schedules and work environment. In our lifetimes, we've experienced many cultural shifts. Currently, we are reveling in instant gratification. We no longer have to wait a week to see the next episode of our favorite TV show. Cable TV gives us binge watching. No longer are we bored waiting for the doctor or waiting to board a plane. Smartphones bring news and games to our fingertips. Did you run out of your favorite granola bars? Amazon Prime delivers seemingly before you even get off the computer. Instant gratification has become a norm. Cultural shifts happen all the time. We're in need of another. A few years ago, I participated in Leadership Cleveland, a program for local leaders to learn about complex civic issues here in Cleveland. And I enjoyed getting to know the other participants who came together from all sectors of the Cleveland community, government, education, religion, medicine, finance, technology, law, communications, the arts, and more. And over the year-long program, through many conversations with my fellow students around what we do for a living, I came to realize in a more tangible way just how many people are unchurched. So many people have no sense of what a church community offers. Some people hesitantly asked me if they were allowed to come to worship at St. Paul's. Other perspectives ranged from church is irrelevant to church is a cult. We need a change. We need to help others see the gift of church, which sustains and nurtures us throughout life, unlike any other program or activity or distraction. We need to help others see the gift of community, supporting and caring for one another, seeking, serving, loving, together. We need to help others take this leap of faith. Why? Because we want for others what is good, what is fundamental to a full life. We share good ideas with friends and family all the time. I just finished a great book yesterday. You should read it. I saw a great movie this week, and you really should go see it. I'm taking a new exercise class at the rec center, which I'm really enjoying. Come with me and try it out. It'll be fun to do it together. We want what is good for others, and yet we shy away when it comes to talking about our faith. Well, Scripture shows us the way. The Gospel passage this morning is, is introduced with these words. 
The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. Jesus appointed 70 to go out and share the good news of life lived with God, to help others see the gift in faith. 70 is a number found often in the Old Testament. Moses appointed 70 elders. Ancient Israel spent 70 years in captivity in Babylon. And in connection with today's gospel, chapter 10 of the book of Genesis lists all the nations of the world which number 70. In other words, sending out 70 others indicates that salvation is for all. The gift of faith is for all humanity. Jesus continues, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Jesus is encouraging us to live from a perspective of abundance, not scarcity. Jesus is not asking us to start from scratch. He is not asking us to prepare the harvest. God prepares the harvest, and already the harvest is plentiful. Jesus is simply asking us to keep our hearts open to inviting in those who are not actively involved in a parish community. We want what is good for others. What helps us endure heartache, navigate problems, care for one another, enjoy one another, live in peace and gratitude? Jesus is asking us to invite and encourage, to help others take a chance on life-sustaining, life-enriching community. Let us imagine the real possibility of a cultural shift Church is thriving community versus irrelevant institution. Let us be inspired and act versus impede Christ's gift of new life. Jesus continues, I am sending you like lambs into the midst of wolves. Perhaps a bit of hyperbole, but here is the point. Jesus understands our vulnerability in reaching out to others. Not all will be receptive to the invitation. Some may not even be hospitable. But that's okay. We are simply trying to help. We're doing what we can. People are hurting. We are experiencing any number of stresses health challenges, financial challenges, work-life balance issues, safety concerns, divisive politics, environmental concerns. We can be overwhelmed or we can be community. When someone talks to you about one of these challenges, tell them about what sustains and nurtures you, about your faith, about your church community. The courage to invite, and as Bishop Hollingsworth always says, tell them you will pick them up on your way to church. The courage to invite is the precursor to a cultural shift. When I look around at the divisiveness in this world, I think so many of us have more to learn about how to love. And I mean agape love, sacrificial love, seeking the best for others. The courage to invite into a faith community where we seek and serve and love together might very well be the precursor to widespread sacrificial love, which will funda fundamentally change how we live in this world together. The harvest is plentiful. Amen.